This is a map of the United States, a country full of natural wonders. To the south is the state of Arizona, which you can see in red. Located at the top left corner and highlighted in yellow is a yawning geological feature known as the Grand Canyon. This spot has been the site of many shocking discoveries. Located in northern Arizona, the Grand Canyon is a mile-deep gorge. Scientists believe the canyon formed between five and six million years ago, when the Colorado River began to cut a channel through layers of rock. Since the last ice age, humans have lived in and around the canyon. Spanish explorers were the first Europeans to reach the Grand Canyon in the 1540s. President Benjamin Harrison established the Grand Canyon as a forest reserve in 1893 and it was designated as a United States National Park in 1919. The Grand Canyon is found in northern Arizona, northwest of Flagstaff. The canyon is over 270 miles long, up to 18 miles wide, and a mile deep, making it one of the world's largest canyons. This natural landmark formed approximately 5 to 6 million years ago as a result of Colorado River erosion cutting a deep channel through layers of rock. The Grand Canyon contains some of the world's oldest exposed rock. The mile-high walls show a cross-section of the Earth's crust dating back nearly two billion years. These rock layers have allowed geologists to study evolution over time. The Vishnu Basement Rocks, the canyon's oldest known rocks, can be found near the bottom of the inner gorge. The Vishnu Rocks formed approximately 1.7 billion years ago when magma hardened and connected this region, which was once a volcanic ocean chain to the northern American continent. Archaeologists have discovered ruins and artifacts from people who lived nearly 12,000 years ago during the last ice age when mammoths, giant sloths, and other large mammals roamed North America. Prehistoric humans first settled in and around the canyon. Large stone spear points demonstrate early human occupation. Hundreds of small split twig figurines dating from 1000 to 2000 BC have been discovered in canyon wall caves. The figurines are in the shape of deer and bighorn sheep. Anthropologists believe that the figurines were left in caves by prehistoric hunters as part of a ritual to ensure a successful hunt. The Grand Canyon was once inhabited by ancestral Pueblo people, who were followed by Paiute, Navajo, Zuni, and Hopi tribes. The Havasupai now consider the Grand Canyon to be their ancestral home. The Havasupai have lived in and around the canyon for more than 800 years, according to tribal history. One of the mysteries of the Grand Canyon that have shocked many people is the claim of cursed artifacts. Maybe next time you're visiting, take care not to take anything away from the canyon. But of course, that would be good for the canyon anyway. This is how it all began. Don McGuire, a trader, was crossing the Colorado River on his way through Arizona in 1879 when he came across Emma Lee. Lee gave McGuire a beautiful Navajo blanket in exchange for some of his needed goods, but she warned him about the cloak's dark past. The cursed blanket, according to the woman, brought nothing but misfortune to her husband prior to his untimely death. McGuire, who was clearly not superstitious, left the canyon the next day. McGuire detailed his a hundred calamities over the next two years, all of which ended only after he lost the blanket. Such stories about cursed Native American relics are common at the Grand Canyon. In fact, park rangers frequently receive letters from tourists requesting the return of stolen artifacts from sacred grounds. Pottery, for example, is frequently taken from Native American burial sites before being anxiously returned to the National Park a short time later. According to park rangers, the thief's reasoning is always the same. They have experienced extreme bad luck, plagues, and other illnesses since picking up the stolen artifacts. Is this true or a myth? We might never know. Another kind of shocking mystery associated with the Grand Canyon is the constant discovery of skeletal remains all over the canyon. Such heinous discoveries understandably are keeping the local police department, the Coconino County Sheriff's Office, very busy. The county formed a cold case squad to investigate mysterious disappearances, unattended deaths, and homicides, as well as identify remains. One of the cases the unit is currently investigating is a 1975 murder on the canyon's north rim. All that was discovered at the scene was a bloody shirt with 36 stab holes, which the sheriff's office believes belonged to a woman murdered by members of the outlaws, a motorcycle gang. The official body count at the Grand Canyon is unknown, 
as are the identities of the victims, whose deaths included accidents, suicides, quick murder, and long-term torture. In an attempt to create an identity, some of the victims have been given names like Little Miss X and Valentine Sally. To this day, the Cold Case Squad is still piecing together crimes that occurred nearly a century ago in the hopes of bringing closure, if not to the loved ones, then to the souls that roam the grounds of the canyon. If you're planning to be one of over 5 million people that visit the Grand Canyon every year, you might want to be very careful. With that high number of skeletal remains, should it be surprising that there have been numerous reports of ghost sightings in the Grand Canyon? Some of the popular ghosts reportedly sighted in the Grand Canyon include the wandering woman. When the sun goes down and the canyon trails become dim, it's said that the wandering woman will appear walking along the rim. Many visitors have reported seeing her weeping uncontrollably as her spirit wanders along the rim or down the North Kaibab Trail in search of her long-lost family. According to legend, she committed suicide in a North Rim Lodge in the 1920s after learning that her husband and son had been killed in a hiking accident. The lodge burned down in 1926, but it's since been rebuilt. Many employees on the North Kaibab Trail have seen her wearing a white robe with small flowers on it. She always wears a scarf around her neck. When one surprised forest ranger looked up one day, she was standing in the doorway to his quarters. Another young ranger recalls hearing weeping outside his cabin one night and mistaking it for another ranger who had received some distressing news that day. He heard the same uncontrollable sobbing the next night. He opened his door to find no one there. The same sobbing drove him outside to the trailhead the next night. What he witnessed sent shivers up his spine, a white shimmer of light, which he described as resembling a cloak surrounding a woman, was moving down the path. He watched and listened until it was no longer visible. The next day, he told another ranger about his experience and was told he had seen the wandering woman. There is also the story of the ghosts of the missing newlyweds. Glenn and Bessie Hyde vanished on their honeymoon trip through the Grand Canyon in 1928, but what happened to them is still unknown. Bessie allegedly desired to be the first woman to navigate the Grand Canyon by boat. She almost made it. Glenn and Bessie were nowhere to be found when the Hyde's boat was discovered floating upright and fully stocked in the winter of 1928. The Grand Canyon was a hero-making run back then. There were no commercial river trips available. The rapids were for experienced explorers and professional expeditions, not for honeymooners and a homemade boat. The Hyde's made a successful run through many major rapids on the Green and Colorado rivers after its launch on October 20th, 1928. They spent a few days restocking at the Grand Canyon Village on the South Rim a month into the trip. During that time, they spoke with a Denver Post reporter, believing that their final destination, Needles, California, was only a few weeks away. Ominously, Bessie admired a girl's shoes before departing civilization again, saying wistfully, I wonder if I'll ever wear pretty shoes again. A massive search for the couple garnered national attention, but yielded no results. Did they abandon the scow and try the treacherous hike out to the rim? Did they fight and kill each other, as some observers claimed? As the story progresses, the boatmen add to the intrigue with sensational revelations, such as an old woman claiming to be Bessie reappearing on the river years later. There is also the sighting of the ghosts of the Grand Canyon Caverns, which some visitors still report today. Walter Peck is officially recognized to have discovered the Grand Canyon Caverns in 1927, but a group of Hualapai tribal members may have discovered them by accident a decade later. When Peck discovered the cave, two bodies were discovered buried in what appeared to be a hole in the ground, but was actually the entrance to the caverns. Years later, in the 1970s, Gary Ringsby, the then general manager, was said to have hung himself in the bunkhouse. Both the bodies, as well as Ringsby and Peck, are said to haunt the caverns today and have been the targets of many paranormal investigators over the years. The most common sighting is of a man, thought to be Walter Peck's ghost, at the top and bottom of the elevator shaft, opening the doors at different times. 
It's also been reported that the Indians' whispering sounds can frequently be heard in the caverns and at night in the darkness. If you're feeling adventurous or simply want to explore the paranormal, you can book a stay at the heavily haunted El Tavar Hotel, located on a bluff just 20 feet from the South Rim. Thanks to these paranormal sightings, the historic property in the Grand Canyon is one of the most intriguing destinations in the country, so you might want to book well in advance. Employees and guests alike have reported strange occurrences at the hotel over the years, including a painting that follows the viewer wherever they go, a phantom wandering down the front stairs and across the property before disappearing, and a friendly, well-dressed gentleman welcoming guests to a holiday celebration on the third floor. If you exit through the front doors and head slightly left across the circle drive to a small stand of vegetation, you'll see one of the hotel's signature mysteries, a small, flat gravestone engraved simply, Pearl A. Ward, 1879 to 1934. Pearl, according to stories passed down by word of mouth, was a cowboy passing through the area. Other accounts identify her as one of the famous Harvey girls, hostesses who lived, worked, and died on the property of Fred Harvey's hotels. Visitors and staff members at El Tavar have reported seeing a black, caped figure leave the hotel's front stairs, hover near the grave, and then disappear behind Hopi House. Another well-known specter is an elderly gentleman who is said to be Fred Harvey himself. Although Harvey died in 1901, four years before the hotel opened to the public, Many visitors are reported being invited to the third floor's annual holiday celebration. Guests have also reported having unique experiences, such as a couple visiting from New Jersey. Mark Griffith said his wife experienced a presence in their room, one who pulled on her clothing in the middle of the night. Another couple from Los Angeles walked past their television to see an old man with a gray beard staring back at them. While El Tavar is one of the most easily accessible haunted locations in the Grand Canyon, it's not the only one. Maricopa Point and Phantom Ranch have both reported workers continuing to work long after their last shift. If you're up for a strenuous hike, you can visit the isolated canyon between Temple and Chuar Buttes, the site of a fatal mid-air collision and subsequent crashes of two airplanes high above in 1956. Hikers have reported eerie lights and ghostly figures near the appropriately named Crash Canyon since the accident that killed all 128 passengers and crew. That airline disaster was one of the worst in the history of the American airspace industry. Nearly an hour after departing from Los Angeles International Airport, United Airlines Flight 718 and TWA Flight 2 collided with one another over the Grand Canyon. The wreckage was discovered the next day by search and rescue teams, and an immediate investigation was launched by the Civil Aeronautics Board. Both pilots were found to be flying at the same altitude and off their designated routes. Because of the clouds, it was too late to avoid a collision when they saw each other. All 128 passengers were killed, and it would be another year before a full, detailed report on the crash was released. The cause was cited as a lack of communication, turbulent weather, and the then-current visual flight rules. Today, the crash site is a popular tourist attraction known colloquially as Crash Canyon. Even today, some of the wreckage can be seen on sunny days because the gleaming metal reminds everyone of the tragedy that occurred so long ago. If ghosts don't bother you, perhaps bumping into the Mogollon monster on the lonely parts of the Grand Canyon after dark will jolt you. You've probably heard of the Mogollon monster for the first time, but it's even scarier than Bigfoot or Sasquatch. Visitors and locals have both reported seeing a towering, hairy, vicious creature stalking the landscape, occasionally erupting in a blood-chilling scream unlike anything human. This creature has been reported numerous times dating back to 1903. The beast was first seen in 1903, according to I.W. Stevens, who told the Williams News, I saw a man with long white hair and a matted beard reaching his knees. He wore no clothing and had claws at least two inches long on his talon-like fingers. A coat of gray hair nearly covered his body, with a patch of dirty skin showing here and there. Stevens then describes the creature's face, which he describes as seared and burned brown by the sun, with fiery green eyes. Stephen claims he was charged by the beast, 
who wielded a large club and was about to fire when it stopped short of mauling him, distracted by a mountain lion on a ledge above. Stevens claimed he shot the mountain lion, leaving two cubs behind, but the strange creature fled as he fired. As Stevens retreated and returned to his boat, he said he noticed the creature had returned and was feasting on all three mountain lions. Stevens claimed that when he yelled at the creature from the safety of his boat, it fled up the rock ledges, but not before he flourished his club again and screamed the wildest, most unearthly screech he ever heard. The hunter from Cedar, Colorado, returned to his camp and then to his home, where he speculated on the origins of the wild man on the rocks. Stevens said that in records long ago, hostile Indians captured three men, bound them to logs far up the canyon, and cast them adrift on the swollen river. This wild creature could be one of those unfortunate men who, by chance, freed himself and escaped death, but was driven insane by his ordeal. There are no records of such an encounter ever occurring, though the Grand Canyon was still a wild frontier in 1903, with occasional skirmishes between regional tribes and westbound settlers. Still, Stevens' ordeal isn't an isolated incident. Over the years, others have reported seeing a strange creature resembling Stevens' original report, though the details vary. The majority of reported sightings have occurred in northern Arizona's mountainous Mogollon Rim region, hence the moniker, but sightings have been reported as far away as Prescott Valley and Clifton. Don Davis, who believed he saw the Mogollon monster on a Boy Scout camping trip near Payson, Arizona around 1944, studied sightings and tales of terrifying creatures of all kinds. Davis is a cryptozoologist, a person who evaluates scientific evidence for mythical creatures such as Bigfoot, the Chupacabra, and the Loch Ness Monster in Scotland. He said the creature was enormous. Its eyes were deep-set and difficult to see, but they lacked expression. His face appeared to be hairless, but there appeared to be hair along the sides of his face. His chest, shoulders, and arms were massive, especially the upper arms, which were easily six inches in diameter, if not much more. Davis said he could tell he was hairy, but he didn't pay attention to how thick his body hair was. The face and head were squarish, with square sides and a chin, like a box. These sightings are, of course, decades old. Before the power of the internet put evidence for or against the existence of such creatures in the hands of the average Joe, with no hiking boots or camping experience required. The Mongolian monster, however, was still sighted as late as 2014. A sociology student told Cryptozoology News that she was hiking the Canyon Point Trail near Payson when she saw a troll-looking creature drinking from a pool of water. The student said the creature was human-looking, with no hair on it, but full of bumps. The eyes were a brown-red color, small lips, and a big nose. It had no expression on its face, then it took off running like a human. Many accounts describe the Mogollon monster as large or human-sized, with green or red eyes and white, gray, or black-brown hair. Its origins are unknown till today, but visitors, residents, and researchers all seem to agree that something slightly inhuman may be roaming the Ponderosa pine forests of northern Arizona. Even if you miss the Mogollon monster on your trip to the Grand Canyon, you may bump into something else, UFOs. Well, maybe not the flying ones, but an expert UFO team has discovered the debris of a 4,000-year-old UFO in the Grand Canyon. A team of experts concluded that the strange debris at the Grand Canyon's bottom was the wreckage of a UFO that crashed 4,000 years ago. The scientists, who were part of a secret joint military task force on UFOs, examined the spherical craft and discovered that it was in good condition, despite its rough landing and incredible age. According to leaks from high-level sources, the relic is made of an unknown metallic substance and emits low levels of radiation. It was immediately removed from the site and is now in a top-secret location. Secret Air Force documents relating to the discovery were shown to Henry Lomont, a California-based astronomer. His contacts informed him that this craft was undoubtedly of extraterrestrial origin and carried a crew of 12 to 20 people. Carbon dating indicates that it crash-landed at the canyon's base around 2000 BC. Cabin features indicate that the crew members were much like humans, albeit much smaller. They apparently breathed oxygen, used a magnetic steering system to guide their atom-powered craft, and carried food and water on board. 
According to the scientific team's reports, the spacecraft became lodged in limestone rubble near Comanche Point at the canyon's base. An extensive examination of the landing site revealed that the spacecraft's occupants abandoned their ship and lived nearby for several years after it crashed. According to Air Force secret documents, this impression is confirmed by Indian cave paintings made at this time. The paintings, discovered near the crash site, depict humanoids with bulbous heads. These creatures, according to experts, were the aliens who arrived in the ancient UFO. The ship is made of a light metallic fiber. It's about 50 feet across at its widest point and 102 feet long. It was an incredible find, but it appears it is destined to be the latest in a long line of artifacts hidden away in government UFO research facilities. The authorities may succeed in hiding the ancient UFO from the public, but what they can't hide in the Grand Canyon is the one billion years of history missing in its natural wonder. How could a billion years of history disappear? The Grand Canyon is a geological layer cake, with rocks stacked neatly on top of one another as they were laid down millions of years ago. That is, until you reach what the scientists call the Great Unconformity, a gap between rock layers that represents a billion years even in some places. Even stranger is that the Great Unconformity appears in rocks all over the world, and always in rocks from the same era of approximately 550 million years ago and earlier. There are numerous unconformities observed locally in various locations, but it's uncommon to find one that represents the same kind of time gap from over a billion years ago to roughly 500 million years ago. Scientists discovered that these rock layers were lost during a tectonic upheaval caused by the breakup of a supercontinent, at least in the Grand Canyon. The findings suggest that while the great unconformity can be found in rocks all over the world, the reason for its presence may be different in each location. Though the Great Unconformity is defined by the absence of rock, the age of the rock layers above and below the gap is known. The researchers were more interested in the time when the rocks cooled than in the age of the rock formation. Deeply buried rocks are under high pressure and heat, but cooling indicates that they're being exhumed or brought closer to the surface as the rocks above them disappear. Since it happens through erosion, the team tried to date the erosion process. To do so, the scientists examined helium trapped within the mineral zircon in the rock. Helium is a byproduct of uranium's radioactive decay into lead. Helium can escape from the mineral matrix under high heat. However, in cooler rocks, helium remains trapped. Thus, measuring helium levels in an old rock can tell you when it reached the surface and cooled. They examined the rock layers directly beneath and thus older than the Great Unconformity at eight different locations in the Grand Canyon to determine when the rock was swept away. They discovered a surprising amount of variation, with the western reaches of the canyon cooling 200 million years earlier on average than the eastern part of the canyon within the Grand Canyon National Park. The size of the Great Unconformity varies across the canyon, with a smaller gap to the east. The smallest gap is approximately 250 million years, at its most extensive, 1.2 billion years of rock are missing. Overall, the western half of what is now the canyon appears to have risen to the surface around 700 million years ago, while the eastern half appears to have risen closer to 500 million years ago. However, there are differences of tens or hundreds of millions of years in locations that are only a few dozen miles apart. This variability was caused by tectonic activity when the supercontinent Rodinia which was formed around 1 billion years ago and broke up around 750 million years ago, was rifted apart. This rifting creating a network of faults throughout the Grand Canyon region, many of which can still be seen in the rocks today. Let's hear what you think of the Grand Canyon and its mysteries in the comments section below. Comments section below. Comments section.